Okay, for our second Triceratops, as you can tell, this guy's gonna be a little fancier. We've got two 160s, each with about a three or four inch tail left uninflated on them. We've got two 260s, each also with about a three or four inch tail uninflated on them. And then we've got two, I just pulled a bubble on the end of two 160s. You can use a scrap or use a whole one or whatever you wanna do. I just pulled a little bubble on the end of it and tied it off. He's gonna give a little bit different sort of eyes. This makes them smaller, and you'll see why in a minute when we get to his eyes. We're gonna start with one of our 260s. What we need to do is we're gonna to go to the very end of it. We're gonna make a little small round bubble. And we're gonna make that into a pinch twist by grabbing the knot and pulling it up in. Twist it around like that. Then we need another one, same size. Got a pinch twist as well. We've got two sort of like little lips on the end there. Now we're going to make about a two and a half inch bubble. Then we're going to make another small round bubble. We're going to make this into a pinch twist as well. And now we're going to make two fold twists. Kind of small. You want them just big enough that it becomes a fold twist. This is using about a two or so inch bubble. We make the first one, and I'm just locking that the remaining part around that pinch twist that secures the fold twist really good. Then we're going to make our second one, make it the same size, just like that. Now we're going to complete the head of our uh, triceratops. What we're going to do is make two more bubbles the same size of these, and we're going to make this a bird bite by going up and locking into these pinch twists and then coming back to the fold twist here in the back. So make your first bubble. Lock that into those pinch twists. And you make your next bubble. And we're going to lock that back into the fold twist in the back. This is going to be the head of our Triceratops. And I'm going to turn those two fold twists sideways because in a minute we're going to make a frill that's going to come up out of that. Now what we need to do is we're going to make a little small neck. About a three quarter to one inch bubble. We're going to make a small pinch twist and make a little small bubble. And make that into a pinch twist. Just like that. Then we're going to make more of his body. We're going to make about a four inch bubble. And then we're going to make another small bubble. Make that a pinch twist. And we're going to come back up with another bubble the same size as this to that pinch twist there. Lock that in there. And then whatever we have left over, we're going to pop off. Secure that in. And that's the beginning of the body and head of our Triceratops. Let's go ahead and complete the body and then we'll come back into his horns and frill and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our next 260. I'm going to take the nozzle and twist it up into this front pitch twist under his head. Then we're going to make him some front legs. Make him about a two and a half to three inch bubble. Make another bubble the same size and then lock it back into that pinch twist. Now we're going to we're going to complete his body with another bubble the same size as these here. I'll make it just a little bit longer so it kind of bow up and then twist into that pinch twist at the back. And we're going to make his two back legs. Same size as his front legs. Just lock them both into that pinch twist as well. And what's left over becomes his tail. And if you feel that his tail is too long, you can always pop off a part of it and adjust the length. That's the body and head and tail of the Triceratops. Now we're going to complete his horns and his frill. So we're going to take one of our um, 160s, it doesn't matter which one obviously. We're going to start by making one of his horns. So you're going to make a bubble about two and a half to three inches long. And we're going to twist that in to where his head meets up with these two fold twists back here. Twist that in there. <coughs> And 
That's one horn. Now we're going to make this frill. So what you want to do is you're going to come up with this one six and you're going to make about a two to two and a half inch bubble. Then a little bitty small round bubble. Make this into a pinch twist. Now we're going to need a couple of connecting points because this frill is going to be fancy and have some little points in the middle. To kind of fill it in and make it look a little better. So what you want to do is we'll make about an inch and a half bubble. Then we're going to make a little small round bubble. Make that one a pinch twist. Another inch and a half bubble, followed by another small pinch twist. One more inch and a half bubble. Another pinch twist. And then one final inch and a half bubble. We're going to have essentially, you've got your start bubble here, and then four of these little inch and a half bubbles, all with a pinch twist, separating them. And now we've got one, we need to make one more bubble the same size as that. And we're going to twist this point back into the base of the head. Now you're going to bring <clears throat> what you have left over. Position right. You're going to come back up in the middle. And what you want to do is you want this frill to kind of fan out a little bit. So measure where this cross is that middle one. And twist it into the middle of those pinch twists. You've got five pinch twists across the top. You're going to come into the middle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the air and this remaining piece I'm going to pop it off but what I want to do is ultimately keep it inflated. I'm going to pull a little bubble off the end to make one of his horns here. So I'm going to take this off and now I'm going to take and just let the air out while I'm holding the bubble on the end of it. We're going to tie that off. Trim that just a little bit. This I'm going to put right up here in the front to be a front horn. So just put that into those two picture pink shifts on the front horn. And I'm just going to end up. There we go. There's his front horn. So we've got two out of three horns and a, a nearly complete frill. And the pink shift is suddenly not cooperating with me. That's more like it. Now we're going to take our second 260, or excuse me, our second 160. Let's just put that in there. <clears throat> and what we want to do now is we need to complete the filling on our frill here. 160 is kind of run away from me. We need two bubbles just slightly shorter than this one here. So we're going to make a measure and get a bubble about where it'll pull, because we wanted to pull that down just a little bit. And then another bubble the same size. And then we're going to take this piece off and keep this inflated, but also keep this inflated because we have one more horn to make. So we're going to save that for our last horn. This is then going to complete our frill. What we're going to do is divide that back into two equal bubbles again. Now we're going to take this and we're going to come in from under his head and bring one up around either side of his head and they're going to go from here up to each of these points here. So bring that up right there. I'm going to cross them over. That locks them in place a little better. Now we're going to take each of these little nozzle pieces that we have sticking up and go up to one of these pinch twists here. That completes his frill. Now what we've got to do, we've got to make one more horn. And we have our remaining 160 here. We want to measure it to be about the same size as that other back horn there. 
Now you can pop the rest of this and release it. Don't need it anymore. Tie that off. Trim one of these ends a little bit. And then this obviously is going to go into the other side of his head here. Straighten them all up. Take his two horns. Give him a little character. Now we've got to give him eyeballs. The final step. He's nearly done. You can stop there and draw eyeballs if you like. That's a, you know, it's a preference thing. But for this guy, because I'm going to do this ever with him, you can straighten the back of his head up. I like to go ahead and give him eyeballs. So we're going to take our two 160 scraps that we have here. Now we pull the bubble in and I'm going to just tie them together. But I don't want them snug up against each other. When I tie it, see how now there's a little bit of a, a space between them there? Let me trim that excess. And what that's going to do, that's because we're going to put that in the middle of his head and that little bit of a gap there is going to let these two stretch out comfortably so that want to show up on either side of his head. So I'm going to come in from the side of his cheek here, the side of his face. I'm going to just poke one of them through. I'm going to reach through from the other side and grab it and pull it out. And then I can cut those back up in close to his horn there. And then push them in just a little bit so they just barely are protruding out. And that gives our triceratops some eyeballs. Let's go ahead and draw on them. And there is a little bit fancier triceratops with a full frill, horns and eyes and everything. There you go.